applause for organizing this meeting, and I'll do it telephonically. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh. um, but thanks so much for, for bringing this together. It's been incredibly useful and informative, and um, really is resonating with a lot of the thinking that we've been doing at the National Domestic Workers Alliance. Um, let me start with a little bit of background. Uh, the Domestic Workers Alliance was founded in 2007, and we organized nannies, housekeepers, and caregivers for the elderly in uh, 33 organizations in 17 cities and 11 states around the country. And what we're trying to do is essentially organize the two and a half million workers who do the work that we say uh, makes all of their work possible. The work in the home that really holds up the economy um, in a particular way. And currently we represent about 15,000 workers around the country. And one of the things that happened um, recently is that we started noticing that more and more domestic workers, particularly caregivers, we're getting pulled into caring for the elderly. And, um, and more and more workers were being called upon to do things like administering medication or um, doing wound care and treatment that, frankly, they just weren't trained to do. And so we started noticing uh, and started reading more and more about uh, the 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 growing aging population. And what we found in terms of the statistics were pretty stark and startling. Um, what we learned is that uh, essentially what we're looking at is a situation where the number of people with long-term care needs is projected to grow from 13 million in the year 2000 to 27 million in 2050. And the population, over 65 population, is projected to double to more than 80 million by the year 2050. And so uh, I think a statistic uh, that I just learned, which is pretty uh, indicative of this uh, impending crisis, is that starting January 1, 2011, every eight seconds an American will turn 65. Every eight seconds, someone will turn 65 next year. So that's four million people next year. Um, so that's part of the context for a, a campaign that we're proposing and that we really love to get your thoughts on um, going forward, uh, which is a campaign called Caring Across Generations. And essentially what it is is a vision that has five core components to it. It's a vision to transform the care industry in the United States. And the five components are that it would essentially create three million jobs in long-term care over five years, helping the U.S. economy recover and meeting the growing need for caregivers. The second component of the vision is that there would be a new career ladder and certification program that standardizes and, and raises the quality of care that is provided for, um, for people who need long-term care. So a job training, career ladder, and certification program. Third, the creation of a new visa category that would allow for undocumented workers, particularly caregivers, right, domestic workers who are already doing care work, to legalize into a career ladder and job training program. So different from guest worker programs, what we're proposing is a visa that would allow, that would be tied to participation in a training and certification program, similar to um, the nursing visas that allowed for the United States to bring nurses from abroad to fill nursing shortages in hospitals here, um, but actually supporting the training of the workforce and then um, legalization into jobs. Um, in addition, the fourth piece of the vision is the establishment of labor standards to ensure that the jobs that get created are quality jobs, dignified jobs, jobs that, um, we, that will stabilize the sector and the workforce and where everybody can work with dignity. 
and not just for direct care, but also for domestic workers, because there's a huge and growing gray market, they call it, of workers in the long-term care industry, and there's a lot of overlap, obviously, with our membership base. So we want to make sure that the labor standards, both lift standards for domestic workers and for the uh, direct care workers or elder care workers, and that part of that be a mechanism to facilitate unionization so that the jobs that get created will become union jobs. And in that way, we have the potential here with this vision to create 3 million union jobs and increase union density by something like 18%. And then finally, a tax credit for families who are paying for the cost of direct care. Our sense is that more and more families are paying out of pocket. Not everyone meets income guidelines for Medicaid and Medicare-funded uh, care. And so to be able to support families who are paying for the cost of, of direct care. And so this vision is going to be federal legislation that we're going to introduce in July. And we're pulling together a very broad table that includes SEIU and AFSCME and Direct Care Alliance. And it includes elder advocacy groups and disability advocacy groups and families, young people, um, the so-called sandwich generation. Everybody is in some way connected to and touched by this issue. So creating the kind of campaign that can actually mobilize people across sort of stakes in this issue. And that kind of leading to the point that I really wanted to land on, which is that this is fundamentally a campaign about values and about human relationships, and which is why we're calling it the Caring Across Generations campaign. We want it to be a place where the experiences and the, the lives of elders are really honored, and, and we as a country take responsibility for a dignified quality of life for the aging population at the same time and in the same breath that we take responsibility for dignified jobs for the workforce that's responsible for caring for that generation, and that it be one in the same struggle. And so, and, I, and I, a lot of people ask, you know, what is this really viable in this Congress and things like that. And I think that the, the approach that we have to this is that this is actually everything that we would have to do to win something like this vision it are things that we should be doing anyway. And so if there are wins, there are going to be wins every step of the way in terms of bringing together direct care workers with domestic workers, with elders, to envision together what a care industry looks like, what this piece of the economy should look like in, insofar as it can be a place where we can model a sector where everybody's human dignity is really valued and respected. And so the strategy for next year is to sort of lay the foundation, build the relationship, get a bill drafted, and enter the debate, get enough momentum and buzz around this vision so that by the time the presidential election comes around um, in 2012, that this will be in the conversation and shaping the conversation around jobs, which we know is going to be a huge piece of the conversation during the 2012 election, and that this be in the debate influencing and, and resonating in that context. Um, so in terms of how uh, folks can help, I think one of the major challenges we're up against is that um, the first question we get is, where's the money going to come from to create these jobs? Mm -hmm. And we've come up with a few creative ideas, and we would love your thinking. It sounds like we've got brilliant people in the room, so we would love your thinking and help thinking through where the money could come from. And in addition, the campaign has a steering committee, and it has a research and policy committee as an organizing committee, and we would love for everybody who's interested to join and help us lay the foundation and enter the debate in 2011. But in terms of the, the creative ideas we have about where the money could come from, I mean, there's no way around the fact that there's going to have to be more money put into Medicaid in order to support this vision. Um, and, and the government is just going to have to pay for some of this vision to be realized. In addition, we've been thinking about things like um, a tax on pharmaceutical company profits because 
of the way in which pharmaceuticals really directly benefit off of the aging population. Um, and we've been also thinking about a way of kind of crafting it so that their resources are going into the sector and this vision, but in a way that won't line them up in opposition to this vision by actually going to a large part of the sector is actually nonprofit. And most of the pharmaceutical companies have nonprofit foundations. And so we were thinking about going to the foundations proactively and proposing to them X number of dollars to create and pay for the career ladder and certification program um, or some other way of, of having them subsidize the job creation. But anyway, we'd love to get your thinking on that and in general your thoughts and feedback and uh, very open and honest to, uh, uh, feedback is really appreciated. So thank you. That's great. Thank you very much, Aizen. Um, so 